you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question out on your own before listening on. We'll notice that this conductor is composed of two portions. We have a portion that is made up of a straight wire, and then we have a different portion that's made up of a circular loop right here. We're going to consider the portion that the straight wire makes up first, and what we'll do is look at the equation of the magnetic field produced by a long straight current carrying wire. And we can see that the magnetic field produced by that wire is equal to a constant multiplied by the current divided by 2 pi r. And what we want to understand is what we mean by r in this equation. And it turns out that that r is a perpendicular distance of the point from the wire. So for example, if we go back to the diagram, if we marked a point right here in the diagram, then the perpendicular distance would be this distance measured right here to the wire, you'll notice that that would be perpendicular to the wire. That would be the value of r. In this particular case, we're being asked to determine the magnetic field at the center of the wire. And if we extended the long straight segment of wire, we could see that it passes directly through that point. And so in essence, the perpendicular distance of this point from the wire is actually zero. There is no perpendicular distance. Now, in effect, if we plug in zero into this equation, we're going to get an undefined result. What that means is that the straight section of the wire here, and also the straight section of the wire over here, will produce no magnetic field at the point marked C. And so, in essence, we can actually eliminate the straight sections from the picture, and next move on to consider the magnetic field produced by the circular portion of the conductor. Now, for a circular piece of wire, we know that the magnetic field is equal to the expression here on the right hand side where r would be the radius of that circular piece of wire. But what we want to be careful about is the direction of the magnetic field. And to find the direction we have to use what is known as a right hand rule. And so what we're going to do is consider the magnetic field produced by the bottom half of this circular ring of wire and we're going to try to figure out what the direction of the magnetic field is. And what you're supposed to do is grasp the wire, remember we're looking at the bottom half of the wire, grasp the bottom half of the wire with your right hand, making sure that your thumb points in the direction of this current right here. We'll go ahead and try to draw it. So here is a picture of the right hand of a person grasping the wire, it's not the greatest picture perhaps. And we've made sure to point the thumb in the direction of the current, which got a little bit obscured here, but we can see hopefully that the current is flowing in this direction right here. And we can also see that our four fingers here, if we use our imagination a little bit, would be curling out of the page. So that means that the magnetic field produced by the bottom half of the wire would be pointing out of the page. Now, typically, to represent a direction out of the page, we use a dot. So what we'll do is put a dot right here, and we can label that B for magnetic field produced by the bottom portion of the wire. So we can call it B bot for short. Now we'll have to grasp the top half of the wire with our right hand, once again making sure to point our thumb in the direction of the current. And so here is my attempt to draw the right hand grasping the top half of the loop with the thumb once again pointing in the direction of the current. Hopefully we can see that the four fingers here would be curling themselves into the page and into the page is typically represented by an X. So we can make an X right at the center. We'll just have to move it over because we've already placed a dot there. We'll make an X to represent the magnetic field produced by the top half of the wire. So we can label that B top. Now we'll notice that the first magnetic field, the B bottom, was pointing out of the page and the second magnetic field, the B top, was pointing into the page. And you might guess here, correctly, that they would cancel each other out. So in essence, the total magnetic field at the center of this loop is actually going to simply be zero Tesla. And so this turns out to be the correct answer. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.